Imagine you were in the high school class of 2020. A year ago, you were told by climate scientists that Earth has 12 years to figure out how to bend the curve on climate change. And you're thinking about that and you're watching all that happen. And then boom, a year later, today, now you're stuck, you're locked inside, you're sheltering in place, you're probably not even gonna have a graduation ceremony. Now, when I went to high school, things were a bit different. I was told to follow what I was interested in, right? Identifying passions, following up, and, and just kind of cu cultivating that curiosity. But that's not the whole story today, right? Like there are these incredibly big challenges and problems that if you're graduating this year, you're, you're, you're doing more than just cultivating your interests, right? You're kind of being handed these big ass problems. So I had the pleasure of talking with this high school class uh, this week. They're in AP Environmental Science. So they're, they know a lot about the climate and the environment uh, and they're studying that. And we got to talk about, you know, what is, what, what needs to happen in, in climate and climate action. Uh, and so I came away with, with three, three ideas that I wanted to I wanted to share and why I think that this class, the class of 2020, is going to be the one to solve climate change. Um, the first was uh, be an expert how to, and how to, how to make yourself into an expert. Uh, the second was finding problems more so than finding solutions. Be really good at finding problems. Uh, and then empowering yourself with, with new knowledge. The amount of knowledge that, uh, that exists is doubling faster than ever. So the amount of new knowledge that is created today is more than the amount of new knowledge that was created one day 10 years ago or way more than one day 100 years ago. Um, so being an expert uh, comes down to, it was inspired by this, uh, one of the students said she was really interested in statistics, but not much like, not really into math, but thought like, well, what if we could make like a YouTube channel where I like kind of break down statistics for other people while kind of learning more about it myself. Um, and that, like, that idea sounded great to me because I was, it really fit this theme that I've seen around establishing yourself as an expert. And there's some, there's some secrets to that. Uh, picking a, uh, this, there's this term called a personal monopoly where you just say, okay, like, who is going to be, if you just kind of draw a Venn, like, overlapping Venn diagrams, you can kind of carve out your own niche, right? Like, okay, statistics and, um, like, for high school students, and then, then you add COVID to that, right? Or then you add climate to that, right? And like, is there anybody that you can think of that's working on presenting statistics to students just on climate? I can't think of anybody, but would you watch that? Yeah, that sounds cool. Like, I'd love to hear what, uh, what a high school student thinks about, about climate and statistics. Uh, that, sounds, that sounds really cool. So, and it's a way to, in addition to being, being interesting, it's, it's a way to establish expertise, that idea that, you know, expertise is something that's, uh, in the good case, it's something that's, that's desired, right? It's, it's interesting. Um, and it's, it's something that's at this intersection that's, it's also, um, it's interesting and it's, uh, it's rare or it, it doesn't already exist. Uh, so that's, you know, to me, that's, that's kind of a secret for, for being, uh, creating a, an expertise or a personal monopoly is picking a, a bunch of topics and then having them overlap so that you're, you know, you're the only person that's, in the world potentially that's, that's doing that. And then you really own that space. Um, the second was finding problems, not solutions. Uh, and this came from Mark, uh, who's a designer. And he said, you know, designers often are perceived as this, like we come in and solve problems, but really it's so much more about uh, finding problems, like identifying problems. And I think that's, that's a really good message for the climate, for anybody that wants to work in, in climate solutions, because it can seem so obvious, right? The climate's changing, duh. But like, it's not that obvious. Like I can't see, smell, taste, hear the difference in carbon dioxide, even though it's tens of parts per million higher than when I was born, right? Like this, this stuff is invisible and we have to admit that. Like it is, it is a change, it is a slow change. How can we better visualize it though? Um, how do we help find these, these problems? How do you take that climate change? Like climate change isn't really a problem. You have to find what is what is the problem there? Uh, so one of these students was really inspiring. She was working on upcycling used shoes, basically taking 
shoes, you know, and uh, sh shoes are worn, you know, they're not as good anymore, and then painting them. So you can like remake shoes that are potentially even better than they were when you started by repainting them, making them, making them instead of something that came off the, sh off the shelf at Nike, now they're like your shoes. Um, so I think there's something to this, this idea of uh, finding finding problems. And I've seen that a lot in the in the climate space is people that um, start with, you know, start with a problem instead of kind of looking for looking for solutions. I think it's it's harder than it looks. It's easy, I think, with, with the climate world to say, oh yeah, things are like, we know what the problems are. And I'd say it doesn't seem like we really do. Um, and lastly was empowering yourself with, with new knowledge. Um, this idea is that the, the knowledge of civilization is growing faster than ever. I forget what the stat is, but it's something like the knowledge of humanity doubles every six months, or maybe it's a year or something, but like super fast compared to 10 years ago. 20 years ago. That means in any given day, there's more new knowledge discovered than any given day, say 10 years ago, and, and much more information and knowledge than any day 20 years ago. So what that means is if you're just getting started today, you have this advantage because there's so much new information coming that if you can empower yourself with that new knowledge, with the new stuff that's coming out, then you can really uh, be a part of understanding and identifying new problems and then the, the solutions that, that come from that. So one of the students asked like, well, how do you filter carbon dioxide from the air? And how do you then take the carbon dioxide and turn it into a powder? We were talking about the, the negative bracelet. Like, how do you do that? That is totally, that's like new knowledge. I mean, the, the tools for direct air capture are still, the fundamentals are still being invented and still being piloted. Um, there's been some, obviously some great work and some great discoveries there, but just think about what we know about direct air capture, like what more are we learning every day? And if you can master that, if you can become a, a really knowledgeable about what's new, then that can help set you, set you ahead. So it was a great conversation with these students. Um, I, I came away really inspired about the, the opportunities and the challenges uh, before them. And yeah, these, these three tips, maybe these are useful for you. Uh, how to establish yourself as a climate expert, uh, how to find problems, not being worried so much about the solution, but actually climate change itself is a, you have to nail down what the actual problem is. It sounds like a problem and it, it is at like a really high level, but actually something that you can take action on. You have to find the problem itself uh, and then empower yourself with new knowledge. In the climate space, specifically in the carbon capture space, I'd love to see a chart of like, what is the knowledge growth in the carbon capture space per day? Is it 1%? Is it 10%? Probably closer to 1%. But like, think about if you just went out and learned just what's new in carbon capture. Within a year or two years or three years, if you just studied what's new, you would know, all, like all the other stuff would just kind of, you, you'd outgrow it with new with newness. I'm kind of getting lost in the numbers there, but you get the idea. Um, so establish yourself as a climate expert uh, by, by picking, you know, picking a personal monopoly, uh, focus on finding, finding problems uh, by potentially like starting in your, in your town or in your, your local region, um, and then empower yourself with new knowledge. Like pay attention to what's changing in whether it's carbon capture or some other climate topic that you're interested in. Just follow, follow the new stuff and you'll quickly outgrow all the knowledge that was, that was figured out beforehand. Um, so check it out. Let me know what you think. Maybe you have a, a fourth tip 